So we're in week nine of our 52 week journey and last week we spent some time understanding the basics, the foundations of your credit score. That's understanding what it is, why it's important, what information is sourced, how it ends up on your credit report. And we looked at what lenders look at when you apply for credit. This thing is your biggest asset, so the fundamentals are crucial. This week, and I know that you guys are waiting for this, this is what you really wanna hear. You want to hear about the things that you can do to improve your credit score. So I have 10 tips for you today, and if you stick around to the end, I have one bonus tip that will help you accelerate the process and improve your credit score within 30 days. So without further ado, let's go. Tip number one, check your credit report regularly. Now this is very basic, it's not rocket science, but I alluded to the fact last week that each of the credit reference agencies here in the UK may hold slightly different information about you. Therefore, it's really important that if you are going to apply for a loan with HSBC or Santander, that you understand who they're going to search you with, which credit reference agency do they use. If they're going to search you with Equifax, then it makes sense to go and check your credit report with Equifax. And what you're looking for here is what information do they hold? Do they have any derogatory information about you or any information that may jeopardize the credit application that you are going to be making? Once you know what that is, you can then put steps in place to try and mitigate that risk or mitigate or challenge that piece of information that might be on your credit score that might harm your application. Now, the common mistake that people make is that they might do this, but they'll do this right before they're about to apply for something, right before they need to go and you know replace their car. They don't give themselves enough leeway. You need to be able to check this on a regular basis, at least annually, so you're abreast of what's going on in your credit file. I've had it in the past where I've had to have a notice of correction put on my file because one of my providers back in 2002, I believe it was, basically said that I missed the payment and that was not the case. I didn't miss the payment. There was an admin error internally. So therefore they put a notice of correction on my file, which meant that when I applied for anything in opposed to the computer making a decision and having an automated decision, it slows the process down. Someone has to physically have a look at the notice of correction and hopefully make a better decision than if I had not made that challenge in the first place. It's very important that you keep track of your credit report. So check at least annually. Do not leave it until the point that that you're actually going to apply for credit because if there's anything on there that is derogatory that could impact your, your application, you're likely not gonna have enough time to put it right. Tip number two, register on the electoral roll. We already know that the electoral roll is a source of information that goes into your credit report. This is important because whoever you go to to borrow money, be it a credit card or personal loan or car finance, they want to know that you're not the kind of person that hops around at different locations without really putting any roots down. They want to be able to find you. They want to be able to locate you. They want to know that you're stable enough and you have a fixed residence. I alluded again to the fact that if you hop around addresses too often, that can often knock down your credit score. So try to find a fixed resident abode and you want to make sure that you're registered on the electoral roll. Number three might sound really obvious, but never miss a payment and never have late payments. These are the things that cause real damage on your credit report. Lenders don't want to lend to people who either miss payments or have late payments consistently. Even if you have one, that will knock down your credit score quite a bit. So you really want to be on top of your money. And this is where a lot of the stuff that we've covered in the community so far around spending plan, understanding what you've got going in and going out. These are the fundamentals. This is where it really impacts your credit score. So missing payments, having late payments, you want to avoid that as much as possible. Tip number four, and may not necessarily be a financial tip, and may be more of a relationship tip, but pay attention to your partner. I alluded to this last week. If you have a financial link with somebody, then their credit score can also impact you, i.e. if you have a mortgage with someone, you're living with someone, or you're married to someone, their credit score can have a negative impact on you if it's really, really poor. Now, I have 
experienced and seen situations where a couple has been married, they've separated, but the financial link hasn't been broken, and one partner goes off, gets into debt, missed payments, late payments, and it reflects badly on the partner that they left behind. So even if you are separated, divorced, no longer living together, you need to make sure that all financial links are severed, and you can do that by simply checking your credit report for any financial links. But that's a really important one, you know, because it's overlooked all of the time. We all have family, we all have partners, your partner Partner is important in this equation. It is a team effort, so treat it as such. Tip number five, minimize applications for credit. The worst thing you can do is apply for three, four credit cards in quick succession. Lenders don't like that. It puts out the, uh, the notion, the idea that you may be desperate, that you may be struggling financially. The minute they clock onto this, they it's an automatic no. So you really want to be diligent in terms of if you're going to apply for credit, do your research. Try to obviously make sure that you can have a look at the best option for you in terms of interest rates, in terms of term, but you want to do your research around who they're going to search you with, what's on your credit report. You want to make sure that that information is intact. It's not going to harm your application. Multiple applications are bad. So do your research, be diligent, and try to limit the amount of credit applications you make over a period of time. Tip number six, use credit builder cards. Now this will be particularly useful if you're trying to build your credit. Now it's really important that you understand a couple of things. First and foremost, if you have poor credit or no credit at all, then naturally the interest rates that you are going to be offered will be higher than for someone who has really good credit. And this is because the lenders will look at you as a high risk client, someone that may miss payments, someone that may default. And therefore, they wanna make sure that they're rewarded for the risk of potentially lending you more money or allowing you to have your credit card. And discipline is the second thing that's very important for you to understand. If you do go down this option, you need to be disciplined. And what I mean by that is if you go and get a credit builder credit card and you have a 400 pound limit, the last thing you want to do, if this will be detrimental to you, would be to go and max out that card straight away and then start paying it off slowly. Best practice in this example will be to get a credit builder credit card with a 400 pound limit, for example, and you spend 50 pounds, 100 pounds on a monthly basis, and then you pay it off straight away. Do not make the minimum payments. You're only gonna do yourself more harm by doing that. Spend a small amount, pay the full amount off, every single month and what you'll find is that over a six to 12 month period that will increase your credit score as you start to build a record that you are that you have the ability to pay back debt regularly on a monthly basis and on time tip number seven and this again speaks to credit cards and something that people often think is a good thing and i don't know why exactly but do not withdraw cash from credit cards do not use cash advances you need to understand, for lenders, this is a huge red flag. It basically screams that you have poor money management. So where you can avoid using cash advances on your credit cards, do not withdraw cash on your credit cards. Not only does it scream to the lenders poor money management, it also costs you more money in interest. Tip number eight, avoid payday loans. There is a myth, and it is a myth, that payday loans are a vehicle for you to increase your credit score. They are not. They are a huge red flag to any lender if you hold them that you have poor money management. So please avoid them. Not to mention, just like the tip before, they cost you astronomical amounts of money when it comes to the interest rates that you are paying. So please, please, please avoid payday loans at all costs. Tip number nine, challenge anything that's on your credit report. And this is again, one of the reasons why it's important as like tip one to check your credit report on a regular basis. If you find any derogatory notes on there, negative notes that could impact your score, 
or impact any future applications that you want to make, you can challenge and add a notice of correction. You can do that in two ways. Number one, contact the credit reference agency and ask for a notice of correction to be added to your file. I did this back in 2002 and I've had no impact on my credit report whatsoever. The second way that you could do this if you don't make any progress with the credit reference agency is to go to the financial ombudsman. They will be able to help you navigate what you need to do to ensure that you get anything that doesn't belong on your credit score taken off. And by the way, guys, it, it goes without saying that if you've naturally and purposefully or accidentally, I should say, missed a payment or had a late payment and you know it's your fault, don't bother challenging those kind of things because you're not going to make any progress. You're just going to waste your time. So you really want to focus and use tip number nine for cases where there's a genuine mistake or something that you genuinely believe that should not be on your credit report. Tip number 10, apply with a soft search first. What do I mean by that? Most lenders will now do a pre-check or a pre-qualifying search on you, which is a soft search. And all that basically means is that it doesn't show up on your credit report as an application. Remember I mentioned earlier, if you have multiple applications, then it knocks down your credit score. A soft search doesn't leave any record. So again, it's really important that you do your due diligence, ask the right questions. If you're applying for something, find out whether they're gonna do a hard search or a soft search. What you want is a soft search. If they do that and the answer is no in the pre-qualification, there isn't a record on your credit score, it won't, on your credit report, I should say, and it won't bump down your score. So bonus tip for you guys, and this is something that if you do implement, you should see a difference in 30 days. The bonus tip is to reduce your revolving debt to less than 30%. What do I mean by that? Revolving debt are things like your credit cards which are open-ended. Reduce whatever you owe on your credit card to 30%, less than 30% of the limit. So for example, if you have a credit card with a limit of a thousand pounds you want to bring the amount that you owe below 300 pounds why because if you use over 50 percent of the limit or the credit that you have available on a credit card for example it sends a red flag to the lenders to say that perhaps you'll get into the place where you're starting to struggle with money management that has an impact on your credit score now all credit scores are updated on a 30-day cycle so if you implement this you should see a big difference in 30 days time. So guys, I hope you found that useful and I hope that these are things that you will take away and you will implement because like I said last week, your credit score really is your biggest asset. It's the difference between you accessing credit at decent rates or being frankly screwed over because you are perceived to be a high risk by the lenders and by the banks. But if you guys have any questions, you know where I am, you can drop me a message in the community. If you're on YouTube watching this, again, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. These videos come every single Monday, so you don't wanna miss out. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you next week.